on this episode. My gosh, she is enormous. Scott's horrified at the state of a beast rescue dog, Cookie. She does not look well, does she? Oh, baby. If any of the toe bones are broken, that's potentially bad news for an adult kangaroo. Alison and Audrey hold grave fears for a badly injured kangaroo. And they can die a slow, horrible death. If the mum can't be saved, her joey is also in danger. Oh, no. And heartbreak for Kate. Her beloved Jimmy desperately needs surgery, but there's a major problem. Jimmy might die. You may. Come on, there's your girl. Hi, Kaylee. Good to see you. Nice to see you, Scott. So I hear lots of barking, so we've uh, obviously got lots of dogs to look yes, after. Yes, lots of patients today. Scott has come to All Dogs Matter in London's northeast to help a charity struggling with record numbers of rescue dogs. I've done quite a bit of work alongside All Dogs Matter for many years now. I've helped them treat a number of their dogs. We've been able to find some wonderful new homes. It's an amazing charity. Right, so this is Polo. Hi, Polo. Wow. Hello, handsome. Scott's first patient cool? is a two-year-old Central Asian Shepherd. Wow. It looks a bit odd. Yeah, someone's hacked off his ears, unfortunately. And they've just so harshly cut off right at the base. He's just got no flap whatsoever. No. It's just so awful to see this guy, such a sweet dog. Yeah. They've just hacked his ears off, like, just to make him look more menacing. Yeah, just make him look more mean and scary. Good boy. I'm sorry, buddy. Sadly, assistant kennel manager Kaylee cares for survivors of barbaric but common practices like ear cropping all too often. Hopefully we'll get to find you a lovely home. Yes, good boy. I don't think people realise how bad it is in the dog world at the moment. Yeah, we are seeing a lot more of these. All the bigger breeds with their ears hacked off. I mean, you spend most of your time sad, angry and upset when you see all the beautiful animals like this just being exploited and abused. They don't deserve any of this. Yeah, well, I see this guy as well. He's got a hacked off tail and as well. Tail. So yeah. they've really done a number on you. And being that it's illegal in the UK yeah, to actually illegal. perform this procedure because it has no medical benefit whatsoever. It is just simply mutilating a dog. No, just to look scary and Just mean. to look That's all it is. a certain way. I'm a dog owner, massive dog lover, and I just can't understand anyone that would treat a dog like these dogs have been treated. It really does break your heart. I think, <laughs> I think he might like me. I think he's gonna hump you now. Polo. <laughs> no, mate. I... Polo's reluctant to let Scott leave. Poor boy. Whoa. Come on, this is Cookie. Ooh. Cookie? Very overweight. But Kaylee has a lineup of rescue dogs in urgent need of attention. On, she does not look well, does she? Oh, baby. Jimmy. In Bondi, Kate is searching for her mischievous Jimmy. Look at where you are. The eight year old cat is running late for an important hospital appointment. Okay, Jimmy is not in this house. Jimmy is a little rescue cat that I rescued around about two years ago now. Jimmy! Jimmy had been left at this boarding cattery by some people who had moved overseas and they didn't return for him. And the moment I touched Jimmy, I knew that he was mine. Hello? Are you under there? He is very fondly known as Jimmy the Jerk. What Jimmy hates more than anything else in life is change. I know it's very stressful. You're okay, don't worry. So even if one new person comes to the house, he loses it, completely loses it. And Jimmy's way of responding to his stress is by showing aggression. Oh my goodness. Over the last couple of weeks, Jimmy has become more aggressive than he ever was before. 
He is not going anywhere. He is not gonna get rehomed. I love him dearly. There you go, buddy. But I have this little feeling that Jimmy has sore back legs. So he obviously really thinks about his knees and he thinks about being able to actually get around like a normal cat. The other day I noticed that he couldn't get out of a cardboard box. And if he's got sore legs, I'm gonna fix them. Okay, let's do it, kid. Jimmy's feisty behaviour means Kate needs some helping hands to be able to examine him. Hi. Hello, Jemima. How are you? He's been good. Nurse Rachel has dealt with Jimmy's antics before. You got sore legs, Jim? Well, maybe not. Maybe his legs are fine. Maybe he's just grumpy. <laughs> maybe he's just grumpy. What's going on with you? What I would like to find out today, is there a medical cause for Jimmy's aggression? So is he aggressive because he has sore legs? X-ray. And what we're looking for here, is there any signs of osteoarthritis in these hips? And no is the answer. For an eight-year-old cat, you would expect if he had some degree of hip dysplasia there, that there would start to be some kind of changes to the bones. And you just can't see, like he doesn't have any little extra bits. With the hips given the all clear, next Kate checks Jimmy's knees. And click. See that? That's where the kneecap falls out. But basically every time when he has this leg extended, this kneecap is out. What are we gonna do with you? When Jimmy bends his left leg, you can see that this kneecap is falling out. And even when he's flexed, he can't get this kneecap back in. This luxating patella is happening in both legs. However, this left leg is much worse than the right. So that just won't flick back in. Yeah, that's just luxated. Jimmy's knees are a lot worse than what I had thought they were going to be. So his kneecaps are falling out all of the time. Some of the time when they do fall out, he can't actually get them back in, which means that he can't jump up, which explains his grumpiness. And Jimmy has probably been suffering with these legs ever since he was six months old. To understand the best way forward for Jimmy, Kate has called in surgical specialist, Dr. Allen. Oh, I can feel the click. So bad. Yeah, I can feel the click. Ouch, ouch. So his left, when it pops out, it won't pop back in on flexion. It's wanting to sit out most no. of the time, I think. Same. Yeah, yep, and same as this one. This you one reckon is... that one too? Yep, that knee feels pretty loose. So the kneecap, which is really shown here, mm. it's unfortunately flicking in and out of place. Yeah. Yeah, and it's really rubbing on that cartilage on Jimmy's knee. So I think the best solution for Jimmy is going to be surgery. I think really the long-term solution for Jimmy is going to be surgery. Good boy, Jemimes. You're okay. Don't worry. Whoa. Oh, my, this is cookie. Ooh. Cookie? Very overweight. Wow, I think she should be called cookies. Yeah, cookies. I think she's had quite a lot of cookies. At the All Dogs Matter Rescue Shelter in North East London, Kaylee has brought a beast British Bulldog cookie for Scott to examine. Come on, she does not look well, does she? She's got a snotty nose. Oh, baby. No, she doesn't usually do this. My gosh, she is enormous. Yeah, she? and she was a lot bigger when she first came. Really? Yeah, she couldn't even walk from literally two steps and she'd fall over. Cookie is an absolutely adorable dog. She clearly has a number of health issues. The main one being she is incredibly overweight. So she was a stray. She was probably dumped because she's not going to be able to run anywhere. Your thoughts are that she's been dumped from a puppy farm? 100%, yeah, 100%. As you can see under here, you can, she's definitely had a good couple of litters and maybe they chucked her out when she wasn't able to breathe anymore. She's not nice, is it? But you're safe now. It's just so shocking to hear that dogs are simply abandoned on the street. I just don't know how you could sleep at night knowing that a defenceless animal you've just tossed out onto the road to fend for themselves. Did you eat your way to freedom? Did you? Mm. Eh? Lovely dog. Oh, really she's nice. so sweet, isn't really she? Really nice temperament. I think what's always so heartbreaking about dogs that are rescued from puppy farming is they're just desperate for love, aren't they? Yeah, they are. That's all they want. 
When you go in her kennel with her, she doesn't want you to leave. She just pour at you, pour at you, and just give her some loves, and she, that's all she wants, really. She doesn't want anything else, do you, Bubba? Well, we'll give you lots of love. Yes, we will. We're all fixed up, won't we? Yeah. Hey? Well, there's a lot of dog for me to examine here. Yeah, there is, certainly. So, should we start at the head in and just yes. have a little look at you, my love? So, you have got a, a bit of a snotty nose, and um, I'd say she probably hasn't been vaccinated. She's maybe just caught kennel cough yeah. in the process. Has yeah. she been coughing as well? Yeah, quite a yeah. lot, hacking up stuff. Well, I think you definitely need a course of antibiotics there, my love, don't you? She's got a couple of rogue eyelashes, basically called ectopic scylla. It's inside the eyelids, and they can just sort of irritate the eye. Yeah. You've probably never seen one of these before in your entire life. It's called a stethoscope. Yeah. yeah. Look at so this. this is new to me, she yeah. says. Yeah. Can't it's imagine you've ever had people. that. That's right. Well, two people that care about you together at once. That's probably a first for exactly. you. Exactly. Hey. Let's have a little listen to you. Okay, so her heart sounds perfectly fine. Oh, so that's nice good. and strong. Despite her excess weight, Cookie's examination is going well. Can I have a little hey. feel of your joints? Next, Scott moves on to the seven-year-old's knees and hips. So her back legs cause of concern. So we've got definitely change in there. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the muscle wastage. You can see that, so you can see how it's sort of yeah. scooped in. She goes down like that. Yeah. Oh, good girl. You've been so good. This view, God, I forget how beautiful this place is. In regional New South Wales, mobile vets Alison and Audrey are arriving at their home away from home, the Possumwood Wildlife Sanctuary. Like, how can you not be proud? Yeah. It's all from the bushfires. Special place. Okay, we're here. Look at our beautiful hospital. I can't wait. The twins help develop the sanctuary's hospital and are regularly on call to treat sick and injured wildlife. We are back! Let's see what we've got in today. Mm, can't Come wait on. to get started. And their first patient is just arriving. Hi, Peter. Hi, Peter. Hey, guys. What do you have for us? They've got ourselves a kangaroo. Oh, another kangaroo. Another one. Wildlife rescuer Pete has travelled more than three hours with a female kangaroo he's named Snow. We found Snow in the Kosciuszko National Park. We got a call to go up there and rescue her. A camper at a national park had noticed that she was limping and that she had a bloody toe. It was a bit floppy, so perhaps it was broken. Um, she wouldn't have survived. We would have got bacteria in and, and, and she would have died a terrible, terrible death. So I thought, OK, well, we can help her. She's got a broken scratching toe. Yeah. So and the other toes are all okay? The other toes are fine, yeah. So hopefully um, it's easily fixed. We're always really, really worried about fractured bones and toes because if we can't heal it, then potentially this kangaroo can't hop around or walk normally. And that's bad news for a kangaroo because we can't release it into the wild. All right, then I can pop around that way and have a listen to her heart. The twins quickly discover Snow is a new mum. We also noticed there's a little joey, and it's actually Snow's joey, Jindy. Jindy is handed over to a Possumwood volunteer so the twins can concentrate on Mum Snow. It is always more pressure to try and save a kangaroo if we know there is a joey that's feeding. If the joey's too young, then they will not survive. All right, let's get her out and pop her inside the hospital so we can have a look. Yeah. I'll grab some extra pair of hands. So certainly if there are wounds on a kangaroo and they're quite deep, depending what it involves, it can be really bad news for a wild kangaroo. Yep, she's heavy. The bacteria or the infection can spread into the bloodstream. They can get sepsis where the infection takes over the body and they can die a slow, horrible death. So it's really important that we do treat and have an investigation of what's going on. Good bandage job. Thanks. <laughs> So we're just taking off the bandage that he's done. It's a really good bandage and just going to assess it, see what's underneath. There's a bit of oozing. Let's yeah, have a look. A Moment of truth. Let's have a look. I'm concerned about this the smell. Pad, yeah. Mm. This toe doesn't smell so good. 
I've unwrapped Snow's bandage and there's this awful smell coming from it. I'm really concerned that the foot could be necrotic, which means that the tissue is dead and there's no blood supply. That toe or foot could drop off and that's really bad news for Snow. So there's definitely a little bit of change in that. I can feel oh. a bit of grinding, a bit of nuts and bolts in her knee. In northeast London, Scott has found degenerative issues in the joints of overweight bulldog, Cookie. She actually has not a huge amount of musculature. When you kind of squeeze the leg there, you can feel the muscles actually quite limited and all this is skin. Oh, yeah. And see how that's actually sort of scooped in there. Oh. The discovery is also a worry for her carer, Kaylee. The abandoned seven-year-old couldn't even walk when brought to the rescue shelter two weeks ago. <laughs> Cookie! This is the first yoga session she's ever had. Yeah, she's loving it. On your cooks. You oh, bless funny her. Girl Isn't she just you. the best? Oh my god, she's mm. so cute. So yeah, that knee definitely has got some changes. There's no this doubt one. about that. That one. So that's her right knee. Let's just... The <laughs> I think she's You're actually right. enjoying this. <laughs> On you. Cookie is a classic example of a dog at a puppy farm that hasn't been very well socialized. They're normally kept in a very small pen. They're not allowed out for walks. They generally have a lot of medical conditions that are completely ignored. And in her case, she's morbidly obese because she's not had exercise, has probably just been fed purely to breed more puppies. So her back legs is the cause of concern for her and maybe why she's not been walking quite so well. So you've trimmed some of the nails. They're still quite long even now. They must have been crazy long. They were tucked under digging into her paw underneath, into her pads. How could you leave that? I mean, that is Just awful. Don't, I don't know how painful that would be as well. Walking she can't walk constantly. as it is, yeah. being this big, and then on top of that, having nails digging into her pads. Her recovery and her rehabilitation mm. will be all about protecting the joint whilst we get the weight off. Right, so. Okay. Something like hydrotherapy swimming would be yeah. really great because it means that she can use all the limbs, get good range of motion, uh, but not actually contact the ground so there's no more pounding yeah. of the joint. Are you a good girl? Okay, so now examination all done and I really do want to see a walk, but also really want to get what weight she is right now. We don't have to share it with her. We can just yeah. keep it between we ourselves. Yeah, we won't yeah. let her know. We won't let her know. Uh, we'll be sorry. But uh, can we go and take it to the... Yeah. Way station and yeah. way Let's go. In. Let's go and see how much you weigh, Mrs. Yeah. Let's and hope the way Let's station go. will cope. Come on then. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, baby, you're going to get up. They're small scales, so Let we'll me see. Help you ready? <laughs> oh, good girl. Well done. Okay. First steps towards fitness. That's a good girl. Come on, good then. girl. Well oh, done. look at this. Look at you walking so well. This is well. a massive improvement to what she good was like. Good girl. Good girl. There we go. Well there we done, go. Honey. At Kate's Bondi Veterinary Hospital, it's the day for her special boy Jimmy's surgery to correct his badly dislocating back knees. It's going to have two new knees, guys. Two new knees today. Ah, oh, not every day you get two new knees. See you later, Gator. It's actually happening today, so I'm super, super nervous. I'm going to take some mistakes and blood. First, Kate performs routine blood tests to ensure Jimmy's body can process the anaesthetic. There you go, little buddy. Oh my gosh, it's time for us to get ready. Have we got all monitoring things? We've got blood pressures, capnographs. Look at me, I'm like a ball of anxiety. A ball of anxiety. I want to look at his bloods first. Kate's anxious to hear Jimmy's test results. It looks abnormal. Oh my god, I knew this was going to happen. Oh no! Okay, so this is a spanner in our works. He's got an um, abnormal heart test, so we need to stop. I've literally planned this like to down to the T, and now look, here we are. So what needs to happen now is that we have to call a stop on this, which is really very disappointing. 
we both have emotionally prepared for this. You know, he's had his pain relief, he's had his pre-medication, we're all ready for surgery and we've had to call it a day. And we need to go figure out what's wrong with his heart. Okay, in your bag. See ya. I just don't want to have another pet die. 18 months ago, Kate was heartbroken when she lost her beloved Benny. She now fears the worst for Jimmy. All right, guys, I'm taking him home. See you guys, I'll see you soon. Come on, baby. Come on, baby, let's go there. Good Sit. Girl. Yes, good girl. Yeah. In northeast London, Scott and Kaylee are off to a cookie, who is so obese she can barely walk. Go on. Nearly ne there. Nearly made it, love. Nearly there. Maybe sometime tomorrow we'll get back. Yeah. <laughs> Be Christmas time we yeah. get down there. Suddenly, the overweight seven year old has second thoughts about making the 50 metre journey under her own steam. You're going to make me carry you to the end. <laughs> She's <laughs> sat down. <laughs> All right, I'm going to bend the knees. Do like you want to help you? you? Yeah. Right, oh, I bend the knees. Do you want me to help? Oh my okay. gosh, let me see if I can get it. Oh my god. There you go. <laughs> oh my god. It's like it's like wrestling a baby Jesus hippo. Jesus, so nice. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, help me. Oh, okay, will she fit through the door? I don't know if she'll fit on the scales because they're small. Oh. Yeah, I see. <laughs> oh, the scales. Oh, there you go. Ready. All right. Ready. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, wow. She can't okay. be. So she's about 80 pounds. Roughly. So yeah, so she's about between 35 and 40 kilograms. Wow. Jesus, you should, you be, should not be that big. So I'm afraid she's going to have to lose, I'd say, at least 10 kilograms. 10? Are you listening to this woman? Yeah. Oh my gosh. How can a dog be that stature, but that weight? It is outrageous. She is so overweight that it's going to have such an impact on her joints, on her heart, on every facet of her welfare. The things I'll do for dogs, I tell you. <laughs> I think this should be an Olympic sport. Should be. That dog lifting. <laughs> yeah. There we go. There you go. <laughs> there you go, back to bed. <laughs> Sadly, Scott's next patient has a history of abuse and neglect resulting in the opposite outcome to Cookie. Hello, Valerie. Hello, Valerie. sweetheart. Valerie, who's Hi. that? Hi, oh, oh wow. Is okay, it? you're very forward, aren't you? Yeah. Hello, baby. You're more lively Hello. than Cookie. Oh my you gosh. You can actually move, but yeah. She is so thin. She really is. I, I mean, this see is... see her ribs. Oh, she breaks my heart, won't you? Thank you. It smells, does it? In regional New South Wales at Possumwood Wildlife Sanctuary, Alison and Audrey are examining Kangaroo Snow's nasty looking foot wound. Well, I'm going to have to get underneath this and have a look. I'm really concerned that the foot could be necrotic, which means that the tissue is dead and there's no blood supply. That foot pad's sloughing off, so you see how that's a different colour? It could mean that we could lose the foot or lose some of the toe, and a kangaroo cannot survive in the wild without a foot, so it would be bad news for her. Let's clean it up, debride it, and see how deep that goes. When rescuer Peter found Snow, she had a joey in her pouch, so the twins are desperate to get Mum well enough to care for her baby. I reckon do the um, saline bag wash. Alison improvises with a saline bag to remove damaged tissues and clean Snow's infected foot. It doesn't actually look that bad now that's clean. Yeah. We can actually see a nasty wound on the grooming toe, which is the small little toe that's on the side of the foot that they use for cleaning and scratching themselves potentially. So this toe has a small little bone that's exposed. So we really need to find out if that bone is broken because that could be bad news for us. You're gonna hold it this way. Are right, you ready? Okay, x-rays. When you're doing an x-ray and you're waiting for the result, your heart's sort of beating in your chest because you don't know what you're going to find. And deep down inside, we know that if any of the toe bones are broken, that's potentially bad news for an adult kangaroo. So fingers crossed, you just really hope you're not going to see any break on that x-ray so that we can clean it up and send her home. There it is, look. 
That's a relief, so the grooming claw bones are all intact. Doesn't look like there's any fractures. The rest of the toes are fine. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So sigh relief, those bones are great. So we're just gonna flush out that open wound, stitch it up, put a little light dressing on there and send Snow to be cared for by Pete until she's fully recovered. So we've got to put head in first. Peter can now head home with his precious cargo, where Mum and Joey can be safely reunited and Snow can begin her rehabilitation. So Snow and Jindy, they have a great future to look forward to now. They will go back to where they came from and they will live happy kangaroo lives. Can't be absolutely nice and warm. Good girl. You can sometimes come in with horrific injuries and they're not as bad as you think. So that's the big thing about our wildlife work. We want to see everything be able to be released into the wild. We give these animals a chance. You ready? Ready for a walkie? Okay, let's go. After successfully treating <laughs> snow, Audrey and Alison are excited to wind down with some playtime with resident wombat Alex. So little Alex is like a cheeky toddler. She loves her playtime and her little playpen. I'm ready. Let me go. I want to go. She really gets into it. She does these cute little hops and jumps and she loves to chase feet. <laughs> she just little potatoes running after my butt. Oh, oh my god. god. You want to <laughs> so we make sure she gets her daily exercise. We're having a great time running after her, playing with her, giving her little bum rubs. But it's just so nice to end the day with something fun. And cheeky. And cheeky. <laughs> okay. All right, we're doing this now. That's fun. <laughs> It's just painful to look at. You can't not grimace looking at how thin she is. I know, I know. In London's northeast, Scott is examining emaciated Staffy Cross Valerie, who was rescued four days ago. I mean, her spine was protruding out, her ribs, she was really, really thin. Um, come here, darling. Kaylee has been caring for the ill treated two year old, lavishing her with plenty of long overdue TLC. And where was she found? Dumped in a park. Dumped in a park. Yeah, in a park, tied up in a park. Wasn't you, darling? Hey, I know, I know, I know. She's very needy, because we're the first people that have shown her some love. As soon as you go out of sight, she'll start screaming. There's lots of love and food. And food, Goodness. yes. Looking at Valerie, it just breaks your heart. It doesn't take a vet to work out that this dog has just been starved. She just has skin between her and bones. There is just no fat on this dog whatsoever. She's an emaciated skeleton with a pulse. It is truly harrowing to see. Really going for it Get now. some wipes. Ew. Oh, oh. Yeah, I think I might have found the reason for her being dumped is this horrible infection back here and in her vulva there, but it may be that she has a, a uterine infection. And what that means in most cases is that they will struggle to have puppies in the future. Ah. And then they need medical treatment. They usually need surgery to have yeah. the pio removed. Cookie and Valerie, they're your prime example of dogs that have been used for breeding, not been looked after, and then just chucked out when they're no good anymore. We're finding those are just being dumped in parks or tied up to benches, and this is what we're seeing all the time. Well, despite the fact that she is rather shrunken, she actually is, is a pretty healthy dog. You know, we good. definitely need to treat this infection here at her back end, and uh, she definitely, of course, needs to be fed up gradually and consistently over time. It really affects you, doesn't it, to, to see dogs like this? It does, it does, because obviously you do this because you love dogs and you never want to see any animal suffering or had a life like that. It's the last thing you want. At the moment here in the UK, there are so many rescue dogs. The shelter here is completely full and they're just full to overflowing up and down the country. Here comes Cookie. Hi Cookie, hi baby. Little and large. A lot of people got dogs during the pandemic and now as restrictions have lifted, they're unable to look after them properly anymore. On top of that, we have a really harsh cost of living crisis, biting a lot of families and they can't afford to feed themselves and heat their own houses, let alone look after pets. Both got kennel cough. You've got a uterine infection, you're too thin, you're overweight, you've got a, a sore knee. <laughs> a right pair, hey. Yeah, a right pair. A right pair. Yeah. I'll start on their journey now, their new life. Find your home. Good. Somewhere that's going to give them all the loves that they deserve. Yeah. That they've missed out on all these years. 
So Kelly, thank you so much for everything you do. It really is wonderful that the world is full of people like you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for coming to see them and taking a look at them. Thank you. Very welcome. Thank you. You've done really well, baby. Hey, Jamim. Yeah, I know you didn't want to come to the vet hospital this morning, did you? Nope. In Bondi, it's a big day for Kate and her beloved rescue cat, Jimmy. Oh, Dean. So he, you know, he went to see the cardiologist. Yes. Came back How with it all go? clear. Oh, He's got a heart of steel. Nothing wrong with Great his heart. news. Great Hello. news. Do you good boy and we love him. Hello. Hello. Come on. How are you, Jimmy? The all clear from the cardiologist means surgery to repair Jimmy's badly dislocated and painful knees can go ahead. Cute. <laughs> gonna get new knees today, kiddo. It's gonna be a big day. Jimmy is perfectly well. His heart is functioning perfectly. There is no reason that Jimmy can't have his surgery today. It didn't hit me till this morning, like the enormity of like today's surgery. Like I was thinking, okay, like he's just gonna go to the vet clinic. And then I was like, oh my God. Jimmy might die. No. And then I was even thinking that like he might die and he didn't even get to eat breakfast this morning. No, but it's okay. He's not gonna die, is he? He's not gonna die. We're gonna look after him. We already checked his heart. Because he's like my heart cat. Yeah. You know that, right? Yeah. Look at him. There's he never gonna be him. another Jimmy. He's there. There'll never be another you. I think when I refer to him as my heart cat, it's because me and him have a really special connection and it's not one that a lot of people can understand because everyone knows him as Jimmy the Jerk and everyone knows that he's really badly behaved. But I know that Jimmy knows me really well and he trusts me 150%. No. 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 We can gas him if you want, Maria. Despite Kate's optimism, no. Jimmy isn't too happy. No. The surgery preparations get underway. Well, that too. No, Jimmy. No. Jimmy is not cooperating. He's less than not cooperating. Like, he's literally cracking it. Jimmy. Ow, 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 ow. No. Okay, you uh, ahead. Ow, ow, ow. Let him go. You're all right. You got him? Keep him. I got injured. Maria got injured. And by this stage now, it's not safe. He's really stressed, he's really worked up. The only way forward is that we're gonna to have to gas him down to be able to get a line in. Did he bite you as well? Oh, no, just like, he just got stuck, you know? Oh, yeah. Goodbye, Jimmy. You gotta go to sleep. <sighs> Jimmy's gonna make his mark and he doesn't care how he does it. And now I'm gonna have a permanent scar called the Jimmy scar. Hey! Hello. How, How are, are you? you? Good. Jimmy. It's a big day. Let's have a feel. Surgical specialist Dr. Allen will be performing the operation on Jimmy's knees. His knees are so bad, oh. Alan. Like, they're so bad. So the kneecap I, is so loose. So loose. Hey. I see him go up the stairs at home. Yeah. And Jimmy literally, yeah. like, one foot, like, Yep. at a time, like Difficulty. He's, he's very sore. So these are pretty severe ones. So, Do you think mm. that maybe doing this, maybe he's going to be less of an angry cat? <laughs> I hope so. Jimmy's kneecap is very loose. Jimmy's groove is extremely shallow. So what we need to do now is to cut into the bone, cut through the cartilage and actually deepen this groove. The first thing we're going to assess here is the depth of the patella groove. Wow. Let's have a look. The reason why he has it is because so he's pulling that See. kneecap towards the inside yes. and so the kneecap never sat in the right position. And so now we're creating him a new kneecap groove. Yeah. All right, can I have a scalpel please? A hundred percent I made the right choice for him. This is the best possible decision for Jimmy. He can't live with this knee. He can't live with either of these knees. But essentially we're cutting through the cartilage and then into the bone underneath. I mean, this is like advanced carvery. <laughs> Important for you to just stop that okay, movement yeah, for I got me, it. please. Yeah. Thank you. I got this. I can do this. You are doing a great job. So the part of the cartilage and the bone that we chiseled off is going to seat a little bit deeper. The kneecap then is going to become more stable. Just extend that starburst as much as you can, please. Yeah. I'll take that tension off and then I'll just tighten this. Thank you. 
I think now that the hammering part is over, I'm super, super relieved. This is gonna change his life. He's gonna walk differently. He's gonna be able to get upstairs. He's one very lucky cat. I'm scared, this is the moment of truth. Great. So he's really maintaining that stability, no longer wants to dislocate. Whoa, look how beautiful this is. <laughs> it's like a brand new leg. It is. All right, good. Next knee. And what a privilege to be able to fix him, huh? <gasps> last stitch, Alan, last <laughs> stitch. There you go. There you go, Jimmy. Done. Look at that. One stable knee. That doesn't move. And they're straight, Alan. Yep, nice and straight. We've been through this really long journey to get to this point, and wow, what a result. This is gonna give Jimmy a new lease on life. Kate can't fully relax just yet. X-rays will confirm if the alignment of Jimmy's repaired knees is correct. X-ray! And Jimmy's new knees are looking good. So Jimmy's gonna be no running, no jumping for six weeks. So that's gonna be the time for the bones to heal. Good boy! After the marathon surgery, Jimmy's earned a cosy bed and plenty of TLC from a very relieved Kate. You're a good boy, aren't you? How did you get to be such a good boy? Maybe the jerk days of Jimmy might be over. You're a good boy. You've done well. So, Kelly, thank you so much for everything you do. It really is wonderful that the world is full of people like you. So. Oh, thank you, and thank you for coming to see them and taking a look at them, thank you. Very welcome. Thank you. Very Stop happy to do out. it. Hey. Yes. In the UK, where Scott visited the All Dogs Matter shelter, it's great news for the three rescue animals he met. Cuddly Cookie has been adopted by a loving family and has started hydrotherapy to help her damaged joints and is finally shedding her excess kilos. Gentle Valerie's infection has cleared up and she's receiving lots of TLC from her new owner, as well as gaining much needed weight. And it's the same happy ending for Polo, the Central Asian Shepherd, who's found a new home in the countryside, with plenty of freedom to run around and enjoy his new life. He can bear some weight on his legs. Can't you? Do you want to show everybody? Ready? Two weeks after Kate's much-loved cat Jimmy underwent surgery on his badly dislocated knees, he's wobbly but recovering well. Whoa. He's been having regular laser therapy to help him heal and getting lots of cuddles from a very relieved Kate. Say okay, bye guys, gotta go back to bed now. Two weeks after Audrey and Alison treated Snow the kangaroo's badly injured foot, the new mum is recovering well with baby Jindy. She'll soon have her stitches out and be able to be released back into the wild. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content.